Hello, this is Connor and Dom from Nothing But Thieves, and we're here chatting with Milky. Milky. Mm. Initially, uh, when we started this band, we didn't know what we were doing at all. And now we know a little bit more, I think. I think when you're putting your debut record out, it's sort of just a collection of the best songs that you've written and it's not necessarily a honed in refined process you're just trying to work out how to record an album but I think now there's way more attention to detail there's themes there are things that we're more conscious of in terms of the production and yeah it's just a, it's it's something that we've learned over time and you can I feel like you can see it uh, change and sort of morph through each record um, but I don't know how you feel about that and I think yeah Dom's nailed it there I think we're, um, we're all you know the three of us together who write uh, Joe, Dom and myself, it's, we're all quite individual with our tastes and with our styles of writing actually, funny, like between the three of us, but we're also really open-minded and there's a really good communication between us and it's all about, it comes down to what's best for this particular song, so none of us walks in with an ego like, oh no, this is how exactly how it should be, or this part that I've done, it should be like this, it's like, what? Well, how can we make this this song in this style that we're, we're trying for be as, as good as possible? And yeah, because of our individual tastes as well, like there's so, such a spectrum of genres, you know, f everything from R&B, hip hop, late 70s, early 80s, and yeah, we, we all, we all share a thread that we really enjoy all of those sort of genres and we just have fun with it and don't really overthink it and just try and create good songs really that's it fourth album it's um well, Joe's been saying before, like Moral Panic, it's it, it was a long time writing that record and kind of living in that stage of life that we have all lived in during the pandemic. And we felt like when we were writing this record, it was a similar sense of themes we were kind of writing. It's hard to get out of the headspace. And I think Joe came up with the concept of why don't we wrap it up with a concept record. It's something fun. It's a, it's a new style of thing to do for us. And it, it means, it, yeah, and it meant we could be really creative. We, we've we never really got our, our claws in to the art and the video and stuff like that that like we have on this record we have such a vision that everyone kind of has to come to us for direction which is the first thing for as a, as a new thing for us but been really really fun um, and it's just a nice way to address things going on and, and paint it up in a, in a new and interesting way and yeah I think we've had a lot of fun with it haven't we? yes yes Well, f this album was the first album that we didn't have a like quote unquote producer for. We took ourselves away and kind of built a studio to our own sp specification in the countryside in Essex where we're from. That kind of allowed us not only to be in an environment that was kind of bespoke to our tastes, it has all the gear that we love, but also gave us the freedom of time that we've never had before. Because weirdly, even major labels have budgets and uh, once you burn through them, they're not an ever ending bottomless pit of cash, which is not what I was told. Um, so doing it this way meant that we had, I think we recorded it over about five or six months, which was incredible. It gave us so much time to live with stuff, redo things and question stuff. So I would say, that's the biggest difference and yeah have just loved every second of making this record it was not easy and it was a lot of hard work but i i love i love what we came out with yeah i don't think and creatively it, it's not i think you can really box yourself in if you're like we're going to write this sort of record it's going to be a 90s grunge record or an 80s disco record and it's for us it's it's simply like r having a core song that we think is really really good and then experimenting with whatever latest synth dom's got you know or what sort of style of singing i could think of doing for that song and then just and then suddenly you've created a slight fresh take on something just by the way you've you've kind of dressed it up but at the core of it each song on this record and every record we do there's a there's a there's a real song you know within it and that's always been a name for us since we were yeah since we were young like you know 2019 Yeah, so DCC wasn't originally going to be a single. We didn't have any real intention of releasing it as a as a proper song. Its main intention was to be uh, like an advertisement for this kind of members world that we've created, Dead Club City, which meant that we could creatively kind of be a bit silly with it and it, we, it gave us more like free reign, I guess. But then we started liking it, I guess. Yeah, it was. Um, we thought it was a, a good, a good piece of writing from us. It, it had a lot of interesting hooks and ideas, and I love the concept, the lyrics. And it was just the fact, like Dom said, we could we could kind of push the boat out in terms of production and use some of Dom's 80s synths and like kind of mess around with some princey vocals. And 
and it was just after we realized that we really like it it was like okay is everyone gonna think this is ridiculous as a single release but apparently not apparently people get it and really like it which is great <laughs> Do you love me yet or overcome? Yeah, I actually was about to say both of those. I'd say overcome just because it's just one of those songs that we luckily wrote. We think it's like we, hopefully a really, really strong song. We we love that song. I think it's banging. Um and Do You Love Me Yet? It was just a bit of fun. It was like we love ELO, Sparks, those sort of like kind of glammy late seventies, rock, eighties. And we just messed around with that, had a lot of fun. It's quite odd. It has a bit of a strange middle eight that's quite Queen and some sort of like Odyssey thing and and there's like a guitar solo at the end which is so prestige but it's sick yeah just a lot of fun that song really love that song and it sounds good because Dom's a great producer I feel like there's this element of like the the Australian audience puts us at ease it feels very re yeah. like sort of quite relaxing environment it's normally uh fruit food based for me something to do with avocado or fruit I'm like I just, I have such strong memories of Australia and most of them come back to like this smacked cucumber I have. <laughs> but in terms of the shows, yeah, I, the, I, I just, I really, like Dom said, I find it really easy with the Australian crowd. I get to be my most natural self on stage, which I find being a frontman, I'm not very aggressive and like domineering at all with that, that sort of frontman in style. I'm just, I, when I can be myself and just kind of be silly, I have the best time and I probably perform the best and I find that in Australia is always like that. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> front man. As a front man, I agree. <laughs>
Uh, probably. I met myself. Yeah, just growing up, uh, probably just hearing my dad sing. Just wanted, I just really enjoyed it. Just when I realised it was the thing I enjoyed the most. That's all you want to do. How's that for a quick fire round? The slowest quick fire round you'll ever see.